Hi, in January 2023, Adani Group, one of India's largest conglomerates, published their maiden ESG report. And the name of the ESG report was Growing Responsibly. And you know what? If you look into this report, they have shared so many graphs, charts, numbers, and you will literally think that they are doing perfectly in all of those ESG segments. Sounds too good to be true, right? However, uh, despite the efforts, I, sh I should say, Adani Group faced setbacks that has raised question about its sustainability initiative. For example, in the next month, Adani Group founds itself removed from the S&P Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which is one of the most prestigious stock index in terms of sustainability. Apart from that, Adani Enterprises Limited, one of the flagship company of Adani Group, uh, received the lowest ranking possible in the Sustainalytics ESG ranking. Sustainalytics put Adani Enterprises Limited on the 202nd position out of the 202 companies. So it automatically raised the concerns about companies' overall approach to ESG goals, irrespective of whatever Adani Group has mentioned in its ESG report. So surely something is wrong, isn't it? What it can be? Are the people understanding Adani incorrectly? Or did they get did they did, did they not get their data? Or did Adani presented their data too right? Um, did Adani show commitment? Or unfortunately is was it another greenwash? So please welcome Nishant, Dushant, Hito, Manuel, alongside me, Chirantan, as we try to dig deeper into this situation. We think by reassessing the strategies, enhancing transparency, and strengthening operational practices, Adani Group can in fact realign its vision with its action. Let's call it an anti-greenwashing speech. Adani is a big company and currently you have operations in a wide variety of sectors including mining, energy, airports, airports and other strategic sectors for the Indian economy. However, we're a little concerned about your record when it comes to sustainability. According to your integral sustainability approach, each of the business has established a corporate responsibility committee with additional terms of reference to oversee the ESG performance. Sustainability has always been a foundation of our business strategy, is one of your claims. According to your ESG report, uh, your portfolio does not merely seek to make a nominal contribution to the global cost of sustainability, sustainable development, and uh, countering climate change. You want to transform the energy sector within India. And that's why you have aligned all your goals with the SDG goals from the United Nations. Let's take a look at some of them. The seventh has to do with the increment in renewable energies. And you are certainly doing your share when it comes to the investment, the sizable investment that you have done in green hydrogen for the next 10 years. We're talking about 70 US million, billion dollars. Uh, there is also some conversation about the, 15, the 15th um, uh, goal of the SDGs, which has to do with uh, the protection of ecosystems and biodiversity. You claim that you have afforested more than 6,000 hectares of mangroves 
and uh, more than 2,000 hectares of uh, terrestrial plantations. However, if you if we look into reports uh, filed by um, government organizations in India, the result is quite different, and we see that there was during the production, for instance, or the construction of the Mundra port, uh, the violation of multiple green rules at different points of the project. And uh, the, same ha the same thing happened with the Chhattisgarh coal mine. There was the destruction of native forests and the human dis displacement of local populations. And finally, there is the claim about the reduced uh, corruption, uh, which is tied with the 16th goal. Recently, it has come to the attention of uh, international media that uh, Adani is involved in crony capitalism and that it has really close ties with the current uh, Indi uh, Indian government. A major environmental controversy revolving around this organization is the Carmichael Mines. The mines situated in Galil Basin, Central Queensland, Australia will produce around 10 million tons of thermal coal annually. Fun fact, the, there are 17 coal mines uh, governed by Adani and they in total produce almost 3% of CO2 globally. The mine site area is home to a number of species including the yaka skink, ornamental snake and the wax cabbage palm. But most importantly, this is a home to the largest known community of black-throated finches and the operation of the mine is subject to the black throat finches management plan. Adani was fined 25,000 Australian dollars for failing to conduct required surveys prior to clearing a large area of the site. The project has been highly controversial with dispute over, it in, over its environmental impact. A Stop Adani campaign staunchly opposed Carmichael, claiming that if Carmichael goes ahead, it will destroy the ancestral lands, water, increase shipping traffic through the Great Barrier Reef Heritage Area, and add around 4.7 tons of carbon population to the atmosphere over its 60-year life plan. Adani has a different take. Adani Enterprise Sustainability Report states that we aim to build a robust company prepared for future opportunities while adhering to the traverse trajectory of decarbonization, carbon neutrality and net zero commission. Another report by Adani Enterprise Annual Report sets a target of carbon neutrality by 2425 and states that the company is committed to address the global environmental issues such as climate change and global warming. With respect to the Carmichael, Adani has strongly con and consistently disputed estimates of carbon dioxide emission. The company has stated that scope 3 emission would contribute less than 0.04 of the global emission. Well, there have been various allegations made against this organization. There was an investigation by Commonwealth Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment on whether the land at Borough Pit 7, about 70 km east of central Queensland mine site area, was cleared in a matter that was inconsistent with clearing procedures. Christian Slatery, Australian Conservation Foundation senior campaigner said, over its life, Adani mine will drain up to 270 billion liters from central Queensland's precious underground water aquifers. Independent scientists and federal government agencies such as CISRO have supported the claim. But nothing goes unnoticed. The sustainability rating company Sustainalytics downgraded the corporate government's related score for three of the Adani Group companies on ethic concerns. The consequence? More than 65 companies pulled out from the project, including global banks, insurers, Long-term Adani contractor engineering firm GHD also pulled out, citing wider environmental concerns around coal and as such the firm's policy not to support any coal projects. According to the International Energy Agency, the energy choices made by emerging and developing economies will have a huge impact on the climate goals. Uh, even though the energy consumption in these countries is generally low on a per capita basis, uh, emissions growth is set to be the highest in these countries over the coming decade.
Uh, currently, uh, these countries account for uh, two-thirds of the world's population, but they account for just one-fifth of the clean energy investments globally. The IEA estimates that around one trillion dollars annually will have to be investment uh, uh, annually will have to be invested by emerging countries to meet the climate goals. India alone will need to invest around US 50 billion dollars between 2026 and 2030, of which more than half will have to be solar and wind. Mobilizing this capital will need a lot of effort from the private sector and the IEA estimates that 70% of that financing will have to come from there. So the Adani group has a role to play in this uh, area. Uh, currently we see that the Adani, Ener Adani Green Energy Limited market cap is around 22 billion US dollars and the Adani group has committed to investing 70 billion dollars uh, in green capital by 2030. Clean energy investments will have a couple of obstacles to overcome. For example, high energy upfront investment costs, uh, uh, but then uh, ongoing fuel costs will be minimized. And we already know that uh, solar um, energy is already cheaper than coal energy. And in specific markets of Brazil and India, uh, the, energy, the clean energy costs have declined by almost 40 to 55%. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a lack of clean energy projects in the world right now and almost 200 trillion dollars of global wealth waiting to invest in clean energy projects. The Adani group could be uh, instrumental in providing these global projects. And thirdly, we do have to include the government and make sure there's good regulation and incentives around it. Now we're going to talk about some of the techniques that Adani mining company can adopt in order to make their practices more sustainable. The first one that we're going to talk about is the carbon capture and storage. This technique involves capturing carbon emitted during the refining, smelting and other processes during the extraction and production of coal and other metals. Next, the stored carbon is then stored in the subsurface of earth with the goal of keeping it there permanently. This technique helps in cutting down the emissions drastically if implemented on a large scale and also provide industry some buffer to invest in greener and cleaner technologies. As you can see from this graph, this technique is currently underfunded and underutilized. Next, we're going to talk about the methane management. Methane is also one of the major contributors in the greenhouse gas po uh, pollution. One of the techniques that can be focused on in order to improve uh, the emissions of methane is venti ventilation and degasification. This involves use of effective ventilation systems in order to dilute and remove methane from underground mines. The degasification de technique involves extracting methane even before mining begins. The captured methane could then be leveraged for generating electricity, producing heat, or many other purposes, and so on. Now we're going to talk about some of the green mining practices that can be adopted by Adani Mining. The first one is biomining, next one is dust suppression system, and the last one is ELM. The biomining involves using the microorganisms such as bacteria in order to recover metal from rocks. Copper can be extracted from rocks when bacteria is added to bioleaching ores placed in acid. The next technique that we're going to talk about is coal dust suppression system. The coal dust suppression system monitors the air pollutants in areas near coal mines and activates sprinklers when the dust concentration exceeds pre-configured safe limits. It overcomes the limitation of manual sprinklers where you have to constantly monitor and like, you know, activate sprinklers when required. The last technique that we're going to focus on is ELM. It is considered to be an effective method to separate and recover organic and inorganic contaminants that could otherwise be released into the environment and could be, help, uh, could be harmful for the same. The advantage of this process is extraction and stripping process occur simultaneously in one single step operation and equilibrium limitation can be removed. It can also reduce the amount of expensive extraction, high fluxes and also high selectivity is possible to achieve. So you have heard about Adani's ESG report and how it's not aligned with the ESG goal. Manuel told you about that. You have heard from Dushant about specific examples of denials. Then Hito and Nishan told you about certain suggestion and opportunities that can be tapped. But here's the thing. Until there is, until you can acknowledge that there is denial, we cannot be fully committed to a goal. So I invite you to be fully committed fully acknowledge the fact and fully divest from fossil fuels. That way we can move forward with sustainable development goals.